Hi, and welcome to a special episode of Make Money the Podcast. And I'm excited uh, to have a special guest uh, this morning, uh, or rather today, uh, on the podcast. And this is uh, Umia Shazad. Uh, Umia Shazad is the Director of Marketing and Strategy at Stanley Black and & Decker. And I know we've had a previous episode on uh, the real estate and construction world. But I'm happy uh, to also have an additional conversation. And uh, Mr. Shazad, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, yeah, welcome to the podcast. And, you know, you're off to buy you in Nairobi, I think. First, before we get into why you are here, how, how, how are you liking the place? There's a bit of rain. How I think it's it? amazing, honestly, uh, being based out of Dubai for the last six years. Um, Dubai is amazing. I mean, um, no need to say that. But I think uh, the only thing we expats miss over there is the greenery and the clouds and the rain, because yeah. that's not what you get so frequently. And uh, been here in Nairobi twice in the last one month. I think it's just fantastic. As we speak today, it's raining, it's cloudy outside. Um, it's chilly as well. So I think it's it's amazing. I'm really enjoying the weather and um, really looking forward to some really nice experience outside. Yeah. And before we get into the conversation, perhaps what, what brings you around? What brings you around second time here? Uh-huh. Yeah. So what brings me around here? So... Um, I'm the director for commercial marketing and strategy for Stanley Black & Decker. Um, I've been working with the company for almost six years. Stanley Black & Decker is the world's largest tools manufacturer and hand tools, power tools, accessories. We are a Fortune 200 company. We've been operating out of Dubai for almost 40 years and we've been growing rapidly. We have expanded our footprint in the region in last few years, we operate in close to 25 countries uh, out of Dubai. Now, as we've expanded our footprint across Middle East, I think Africa is something which has been in our priority list for quite some time. Yeah. And as a part of the strategy that I lead, I think expansion is one of the key things for any company. So. We understand there has been stability in terms of the foreign direct investment which has been pouring in the East African region. And of course, Kenya being the gateway to the entire East African region because of its strategic location. Yeah. Um, that is what really brings me over here. And then, mm-hmm. of course, we do have some partners over here. We are understanding the market better and excited to learn more. So that is the reason I'm here second time in one month. Yeah. So before we come to the vision you see and you know what you see for africa i would be interested to know foot of 40 years or you know four decades plus going uh in the middle east yeah. what are some of the biggest achievements you've had in that market so look um as i mentioned we are the world's largest tools manufacturer but the way the company is we have flagship brands of dewalt stanley and black and decker dewalt is guaranteed tough this is for the tough job sites which require high class tools which need to be used for the longer duration, so that is where DeWalt comes in. Yeah. So we've been participating actively in constructing the Vision 2030 of Saudi Arabia, the Vision 2020 in UAE, and we've been contributing actively towards all the development through our construction power tools on DeWalt and hand tools on Stanley uh, across the region. So mm-hmm. one of our biggest achievement is that if you look at Dubai and everyone knows how the construction has been, you know, at a different level in Dubai, at all these sky rises, uh, all these high rise buildings, all these Palm Jumeirahs of the world and Burj Khalifas. And yeah. I think from each and every project you would look at, our tools have been used. So we've been really at the forefront of contributing, you know, through our innovation, through our best in class tools in terms of constructing the vision which people are looking at today. And that is what makes us proud because it's not only the contribution from a manufacturer's point of view that we mm-hmm. sell tools, we manufacture tools. Yep. It's also about uplifting the construction ecosystem through the after sales service we provide, through the job site consultancy we provide, and how do we bring in that overall construction ecosystem together by educating uh, the entire value chain from a construction worker to a foreman to a procurement person to a health and safety person that how they can work efficiently with our tools and what are those things which are required for them to conduct their jobs in a better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next stage for you after the four decades plus is moving into Africa. I know Africa is quite unique and, uh, you know, we might not be the Dubai's or the Saudi Arabia, but we always like a good uh, growth story and it's great to see the number one tools brand, you know, 
grown of Connecticut in the US have had a base in the Middle East, you know, for 40 years yeah. plus. Now looking into Africa, what are some of those opportunities that you do see uh, in yeah. terms of your vision for Africa, if you would speak to that? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah. And uh, that perfectly aligns to what we are trying to do here today. Um, Africa is massively growing and quickly as well. When we talk about Africa, I think people fail to realize there are over 50 countries in the African continent. So there is this east side of Africa, there is west side of Africa, North Africa, Central and South Africa. It's big. And every country is unique in its nature. And we understand that, yes, there are some economic challenges around uh, the larger African continent. But yes, there are some emerging markets as well and growing economies like well, uh, the growing economies as well in 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 this continent like uh, Kenya, and we recognize the development that is happening. And we, as a global company, we monitor all this development very closely. We are closely monitoring the construction index. We are closely monitoring the investments which are poured into the region. We've also been looking at the steadiness of the foreign direct investment that has been flowing in the region, investments coming into the technological side, the urban infrastructure that is developing further, the investments on the technology and the healthcare side. So it gives us that belief in terms of what is the next, probably not a long term, but a short term, five to six years economic outlook, yeah. which is very important for our company like ourselves to understand and evaluate and take a step back and see that, okay, if we really have to come in, which we are going to now, yeah. how do we take that sustainable measures and strategies collectively with us as we move forward? Because we are going to come in and we are going to come in for the longer run. So we are just monitoring all of these things very closely. Yeah, yeah. And I like you mentioned that Africa is, a, is diverse. Uh, you did mention we have 50 plus countries very different segmentation. If you look at West Africa, it might be very different to North Africa, Correct. different to East Africa, different to South Africa. The good thing, Stanley Black & Decker has also a variety of tools. So how a uh, variety of tools and solutions towards construction. So in terms of the diversity, the diversity in, in your product offering, the diversity presented by the continent, how do you go about, you know, making sure that you meet, you know, the different needs that might vary across you know it might be very different for east africa versus vis-a-vis -vis, yeah. west africa and, and south africa absolutely look um, i think uh, globally we have been investing a lot in terms of understanding what are the right tools for the right applications and we've been innovating accordingly as well the job sites of the west are very modern they are almost cordless the job sites towards this part of the world even in the subcontinent and now in africa as well they are very traditional in nature. Still corded tools are being used. Still heavy generators are being used. Um, still wooden scaffoldings are being used. So the market is very traditional. We have the tools which serve the entire need of a particular job site. All the power tools, all the accessories, all the hand tools. I was in Egypt uh, last week and uh, over there I visited some construction sites. And now this week I'm here. Construction sites are very similar. I mean, and I'm very sure the construction sites towards the West Africa and Nigeria would be very similar as well. It all comes down to the point that how the construction work workers or how a particular contractor is actually understanding that how he has to take that entirety of tools in the portfolio and to bring them to use in a certain way so that every tool is used for the right application. Now we have tools for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work. We have tools for woodworking. We have tools for interior finishing. We have tools for civil works and concrete work. We have entire range of power tools. And this, the reason I'm here today is because we've been participating in Big Five where we are showcasing that entire range of power tools and tools and accessories. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to educate that entire construction ecosystem and tell them, All right, we understand that you might have some resistance towards moving to cordless tools, which yeah. are technologically more advanced. Mm -hmm. We also try to educate them that why cordless tools are better. But we are also wary of the fact that the market is a bit traditional. So we are trying to educate the entire construction ecosystem. They're right. You want cordless? We have cordless. You want corded? We have corded. But 
this is the right tool for the right application. And it's all about empowerment. This is what the industry requires right now. And that's what we are trying to do. Another unique challenge that you might find across the continent and pushing it out beyond Kenya, you know, to look at East Africa and, you know, the rest of the continent is around infrastructure challenges. We do know we are still a work in progress on that side of things, you know, vis-a-vis, you know, other parts or other markets, you know, the more emerging and, and, and advanced economies are better off. Perhaps the contribution you do seek, because this again is an opportunity for yourself. A lot of the infrastructure you are talking about is actually construction. It will need to, uh, you know, putting up of roads, putting up of housing and quality builds. What, uh, how would you now see yourself now as a company now contributing also to that drive that there's a need for infrastructure on the continent? Yeah. And you're already providing one side of it by, you know, powering. We have the labor, we have the skills. You have the tools. How do you feel that that contributes to the bigger picture of you know the continent needs infrastructure and? I think uh, this is yeah. the this is the perfect mix mix that is required. Uh, intention that's that the country and the economy has that intention to move and progress forward. Nothing starts without manifestation. So you really have to manifest around where do you want to be. I think that manifestation happens at every level, at an individual level, at a corporate level, and at a larger level in the government. That's how they develop their visions. So that vision has been established. Now there have to be the right contributors to that vision, like ourselves. Okay. So I was recently reading the kind of developments which are coming in. So there is this railway development which is going to be there to connect Nairobi and Mombasa. Yeah. Then there is this road development which is going to come in which kind of connects Kenya, Ethiopia and uh, Somalia. Yeah. So I think that entire infrastructure development in the larger scheme of things is going to contribute to that vision for the entire East and West African market. Why? If I really leave West Africa out right now and look at East Africa, there are a lot of trade agreements which are coming into effect. You know, there is AFTCA, there is COMESA, there is, if you go towards the northern part of Africa, there is Agadir. So it's more, we also understand the approach is more towards looking at African continent as an African Union, how European Union is and to promote free trade agreements and things of such nature. If the vision is to promote all of these agreements, how that free trade is going to come into effect if the logistical infrastructure is not robust enough. So that is where these road developments come in. That is where the infrastructure development comes in. That is where people like ourselves, companies like ourselves come in. Because this is what has happened across Middle East. This is what has happened across Americas. Now, in many ways, it's time for Africa. Yeah. So you really have to think in different ways that how can there be partnerships which can come to a certain point in terms of bringing that larger benefit to the society. Yeah. So that's how we assess this. Great. Let me say first, even before we continue, is I'm quite impressed by the knowledge you do have, you know, Africa Free Continental Trade Area. You have quite the view on, 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 on the infrastructure projects, various infrastructure projects going on. So quite quite commendable, I would say. Right. I'd like to move uh, again, look into, go into partnerships. Now, partnerships are very important. And uh, even a conversation like this, um, I need to be here, you need to be here. Yeah. You know, it, it takes two, in, uh, in essence, to even have these discussions. In terms of your approach, as Stanley and Decker, to, in, to partnerships in Africa, and which, which are, which, if you would speak first to your approach in partnerships as, as a company, and which perhaps are the partnerships you are looking forward to uh, as you, you know, take this step into expanding into Africa? So, um, we value our partners throughout the value chain, um, from distributors to dealers in the market, to end users, to contractors, to a person like you or me who's coming to buy the tools is our partner. Without this value chain, we don't think we can be successful. So for us, partnerships are of strategic importance. We look at partnerships in multiple angles. We have partners who provide us the go-to-market access, who work with us, who make sure that our tools, our services, the 
service ecosystem that we want to offer and the entire communication we want to offer is readily available across the value chain. People who are in the trade market can go in and buy the tools. Contractors need the tools. They can call us in. We can inform them about how to use the tools and we can do all of those things, right? So we work with channel partners like this. Now what we are also trying to do is we are trying to work closely with vocational training institutes and the training bodies. Um, DeWalt has a big program around trade scholarship where we are investing big time in terms of upskilling the workforce. We understand that the people who are going to use the tools need to be prepared to use the tools. It's similar to that exercise we go through and every individual most probably would go through in terms of learning in school like we study a curriculum in a school in terms of getting educated, the vocational training institutes are quite similar. So we want to make sure that people who are getting into those vocational training institutes, learning some skills around construction, woodworking, mechanical work, industrial work, plumbing or whatever, how can we support their development? So we have a big program around this. Uh, myself and uh, my general manager was uh, here as well this week. We've been meeting some partners um, in Nairobi where they have expressed great amount of interest in working with us closely. So our partnerships are going to be long term and we are going to make sure that if we step into it, how do we create that, if, you know, that lasting impact towards, you know, making sure that these people really go to that level where they are capable and they are learned enough in terms of, you know, taking care of their livelihoods as they go forward. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> I think now the next question is to speak about sustainability. Now, sustainability is a topic we can't escape uh, in this, you know, in 2024 is something you get asked about. And more so in construction because, you know, because of the much input that goes into construction, yeah. questions come up around sustainability. In terms of Stanley Black and & Decker and your incorporation of sustainability practices, uh, and first, how's, what's your approach towards sustainability and what will be its importance, especially as you come into the African market? So, uh, Kevin, look, uh, sustainability is one of our core values. Yeah. And um, we are actively assessing the measures we can take towards making the overall construction ecosystem more sustainable. <clears throat> that is where our vision of making the job sites across the region cordless comes in we know once the job sites are cordless energy efficiencies come in waste reduction happens that is where our solutions like dust extraction system perform and protect systems come in so we are looking at that overall construction ecosystem with a very close lens and we will continue to move into a direction where we continue to innovate across the entire value chain of the products to bring in more sustainable practices. Yeah. And sustainability is not only limited to us talking about the quality of tools or the battery platforms we offer. Sustainability is also about educating the construction ecosystem from construction workers to the foremen, to the supervisors, to the HSAC managers that what are the right practices which a global company like ourselves communicates to all the construction partners in the region and all the contractors in the region. So it's it's really about forming that kind of a panel where we encourage these discussions, where these discussions become normal because they have to become normal. We cannot hide behind these discussions because carbon emissions are growing pollution is happening, things like this are common and it really affects personal health as well. So how can we take some conscious efforts towards, you know, reducing the effects on the larger environment and for our personal selves as well? So that's yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Innovation is another side of things and you know, you're already leading in innovation. I think you mentioned cordless technologies. I think I took some time to look through a summary of the white paper you had around, you know, guys now moving from the cord to the cordless technologies and the impact that has. Perhaps for someone, you know, 
tend to look into innovation like wondering what's coming next then will stanley black and decker be there in terms of you know pushing us next innovation you know you're, you're doing a lot on that frontier uh, i think we spoke about you spoke quite comprehensively about battery technologies and their importance and where they are better than you know the older technologies yeah so for someone looking out for uh innovative products around construction what can they expect from yourself look i think um construction requires innovation like any other vertical or any other industry would require innovation because there have been conventional methods which have been used for long periods of time we looked at moving from corded to cordless now our agenda is to move from petrol or gas powered product to cordless okay. which is very big what that means is today all these compactors which are being used at job sites which are fuel powered fuel is expensive in this region as well and then most certainly not available at all times and you know someone has to go in and bring it how can be how can we kind of look at having the tools which are battery operated and yet do the job of the tools which are actually being run on petrol and gas that is where our innovation of power shift comes in um we are launching power shift in middle east we are going to launch power shift in uh, africa as well and that is where that true innovation really falls in then there is continuous innovation in different battery platforms so the idea is if someone is working on a devolt system what devolt system is if you have a devolt drill driver if you have a devolt hammer drill driver if you have a devolt grinder circular saw a jigsaw or so on and so forth you know you have devolt tools you probably need one battery because you can use that one battery across all the tools as and when you require so mm. the idea is to have our systems on one battery platform so that you really if if someone really wants to have the devolt system they don't really have to buy all the kits and chargers alongside all they can do is they can probably look into having bare units and a few kits and they can just plug and play with the batteries and yeah. move alongside and we've had a recent innovation around um uh, the devolt grabo lifter i mean it's an amazing it's an amazing device um, uh, all you have to do is you have you know you see people uh traditionally holding these gypsum boards and uh, glass panels and you know tiles by their hands and probably through manual suction uh, machines but this machine is basically battery powered it allows you to kind of just stick it to the tile or the you know uh, glass surface or the wood panel or whatever it is we have entire details around it so you just kind of press the button it sucks onto it and it just can hold it up to till the time there is battery and the batteries are going to last so uh, it can hold up to 120 kg of weight and um you'll have some videos around it as well we've some them we've done some great demonstration during yeah. big 5 So this is the journey we are on and it's just a start and we are bringing in a lot of innovation across different construction applications as well so um and our job is to continue to inform the overall construction system about what is coming in so that is where we truly depend on partners as well because yeah. our partners are truly going to help us commercialize the range in the market so that's where this entire thing comes in right great Just before wrapping up someone a contractor might be wondering I've learned quite a lot from this but how else can I learn more about standard standard uh, black and decker and its product offerings where do people you know reach out to yourself and get to see you know the whole body of what you have absolutely offer? so yeah. um, so we have different channels where we can be reached out um on LinkedIn on Instagram on our websites as well Uh, most importantly we have a channel partners here in Nairobi um they can reach out to them as well um that's the best way to reach out to us and then i think the more and more we go forward i think uh, it's just going to be so convenient for the construction professionals to get in touch with us because we have a demand generation team through a market service agency 
and we do road shows as well in terms of showcasing the products and the innovation so if you're in a trade trade street if you are anywhere in the market where tools are getting sold don't be surprised if you see a stanley or a devolt pop up yeah. or you know road show happening where you know you're being taught in terms of how this true innovation is coming together great mr shazad thank you for dropping by on the podcast and that's the time we have uh, for this thank uh, discussion you so much, thank you yeah thank you. and that has been a presented a special presentation of make money the podcast and catch you next time thank you for joining us